bright new star, brighter than anything in the sky except the sun, the moon, and Venus. So bright that it could often be seen during the day. Throughout most of 1573, the star remained, not disappearing until early 1574. How could there be a new star in the heavens? Did not the church teach that on the seventh day God ceased the work of creation and afterward created nothing more? And did not Aristotle's science teach that the heavens were perfect, eternal, and unchanging? Men reasoned that perhaps what they had seen was not a star at all, but a ball of fire that had risen from the earth and become trapped on the earthly side of the heavens. Three years later, the appearance of a new comet made continued acceptance of the old explanations more difficult. What was needed, men began to say, was a new theory of the heavens. Unknown to most people, a new theory had already been advanced. In 1543, Nicholas Copernicus, an obscure Polish monk, had published a painstaking mathematical analysis of Ptolemy's astronomical observations still the world's most accurate after 1,300 years. Copernicus, who thought of himself as an Aristotelian, merely wanted to free astronomy from Ptolemy's complexity.